Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to a Friday edition of the Garn Report. Dart Adams is here. Red hey. everywhere. Um, Dart, it's been a year. It's been an off season. Always enjoy talking Celtics with you. And I want to get your vibe on this team. How you're feeling about it. How you felt about the off season. How things look going forward. But uh, we do have a little bit of news this afternoon. We'll kick around first. Jalen Brown's back in Boston. Um, attended a court refurbishing in Dorchester. Uh, you know, did a short speech. Made an appearance out there. Uh, he was in New York on ABC News last night. Been busy out in Spain, obviously, um, which is what initially held, held up extension talks. Now it sounds like they're going to get going again next week but this is obviously the big story in Celtics land right now is uh, Brown and the extension talks and it's a little strange there's been a lot of reporting that said this is normal this isn't any return here Um, but we're now almost all the way through July three weeks since he's been eligible to extend Mm -hmm. and not a ton of momentum here so how have you felt about this whole saga if we want to call it that um, I've just been seeing Celtics fans panic, and I'm sick of hearing them panic about everything, whine and cry about everything. Jalen Brown's about to sign what may be the richest NBA contract ever for this small time frame before everybody else becomes eligible and does it. There's gonna be a lot of there's a lot of stuff that needs to be hashed out before this contract gets signed. That we're dealing with this new deal that happened, the CBA and all this other stuff that happened before, uh, incentives, uh, how, all these other things. How are we going to sign this deal? How much money is it going to be? Is it going to leave wiggle room to do other things for the Celtics? There's a lot involved in this contract, right? And I feel as though Celtics fans wanted this to be over soon so it could be signed so they can be comfortable. And Celtics fans always want to be comfortable. They 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 wring their hands a lot. They're always nervous about the, the <laughs> other shit dropping, and it's annoying to me. Any, I'm I'm for I'm about to turn 48 in August. When I read how long this new uh, deal was with the salary cap and everything else, and everything involves in taxes, and and then on top of that, you're dealing with the new system of now you're signing for the um, for the max. He was all NBA. You know, there's so much going on. Yeah, and that's I started thinking about that a couple of days ago, wh- what this whole offseason means for Jalen. I, I I also think the deal is going to get done. It, it just makes too much sense on both sides for Brown to get the money, for the Celtics to get uh, that control long term, you know, whether they're committed to him or not. That's a bonus on both ends for them. Um, so I, I guess it's probably tax. I guess it's probably some level of protection on both ends holding this up. Um, I think the latest thing being kicked around is the player option, which makes a lot of sense to me, uh, as well as the trade kicker and things. It just sort of make it a varying level of difficulty to move him going into the future. There. You can't get a no trade clause, of course. I don't think after this Bradley Beal saga that anyone would get one anyway, even if he was eligible for one. But um, it, it definitely just seems to be some tinkering here, and it's going on a little long in my mind, but I think it will get done. And there's so much involved. There there's, is. There's so the many specifically. Yeah. There's so much in there's so much that has to be hashed out with this deal. And taking their time with it is the smart thing to do. It's the common sense thing to do. Is it taking longer than fans would like? Of course. But that's life. Just like when any Celtics fans should understand over what's happened over the last two years, things don't go the way you think they will. Yeah, and I, I guess the thing is, for most guys in this position, it is sort of just boom, done. You know, it's the mm-hmm. super max. There's no incentives. There's no if this or that. That's the player option. Most guys get the player option. So the hand ringing does say a little something about his situation here. I wonder... I just wonder how both sides view each other at this point, because we know through the interviews there was some resentment on Brown's end from last summer and how that went down with the Durant saga. 
I'm sure it. I'm sure there's probably some legitimate worry given the uh, you know comments and everything else on the Celtics end about how committed he is to Boston long term. And we know in this new dynamic, pretty much anyone can get out of their situation, no matter how many years are left on their term, no matter you know how good the situation looks. So I, I think that's probably a small part of it too, is just the slightest distrust on both sides that exists here. And again, Brown's talked about this and I, I wish it wasn't there. I think it'd make it easier to progress into the future. And I, I have to think that's part of why Porzingis is here too. You know, obviously he's a guy who really solidifies this core and we'll get to him in a minute, but he's also another all-star caliber guy who's signed long-term now, who's able to play alongside Tatum, who solidifies this core no matter what happens going forward with Brown here. I think you want all three, but it's also going to be, as you said, very expensive to keep all these guys under the new CBA. So there's a lot that goes into this, really. And I, it's it's tough. You know, I think we all think the deal is going to get done, but it's tough to, I think, say definitively whether Brown's going to be here for a long time. I mean, we never know that ever. Um, yeah. Uh, this is a new era for the league. I mean, I was talking to somebody about this. When I was growing up, players had their numbers retired with the team. They were with the team for a long time. Players move around so much now, and they have power they didn't have before, which I don't have a problem with. They, if they can advocate for themselves, they can have leverage. God forbid, you know, these uh, players have any type of agency or autonomy. No, we don't want to see that. What? Um, so... Jalen Brown being apprehensive is the intelligent thing to be. Jalen Brown holding the team accountable for not handling things the way they should have is the smart way to be. We've had discussions about there was the stretch of time when um it looked like they were going to trade people for AD and uh, when Danny Ainge went out, said publicly that he was angling to sign AD when he was still still had two more years under his contract in New Orleans. Yeah, and Jalen was part of that air whole era too. Exactly, and and everybody was there. So everybody's sit, sitting in that locker room like, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me that if they ask for me, I'm out the door, but you're saying that I'm the pretty sure this franchise? So you start there where the talk of players being assets – and not players, not parts, of, not not a part of the team going forward, not the future of this franchise, assets. Because at the end of the day, basketball, the NBA is a business, and Jalen is very aware of that. As in, as is Jason, and when you see how Jason and Jalen are like, you know, weighed against each other, I look at them as the duo that we never got because uh, we had. Len Bias pass away before he became a Celtic. And unfortunately, we're approaching the, uh, wow, the 30th anniversary of losing um, Reggie Lewis. We never got that duo. We never got to see those players develop as young players and go through all the different stages, right? We're getting that with the Jags. And I just feel like the Celtics fans are so they're so blinded by almost winning the championship in 2022 and feeling like they should have done more, forgetting the field and who was actually winning championships and who was ahead of them this whole time and their ages, 26 and 27. You know that they're they're missing the forest for the trees. Well, it's Jaylen, interesting. Jalen will be under contract. Jason will be under contract. And we'll talk about Przingis later, but there's so much involved with Jalen Brown making the Boston Celtics kind of suffer during this <laughs> agonizing, grueling um, <laughs> negotiation. He should do it. He should hold their feet to the fire. I would do it. Now, as a Celtics fan, people are being, you know, apprehensive and scared. Oh, what happens if he leaves? What happens if he leaves? That's always a question. We just lost Marcus Smart. He was here for nine years. You know, that's always the issue. Watch the damn team. Try to enjoy Boston Celtics basketball for a change. 
You know, just try. Please. Just to wrap this Jalen thing, he did appear at uh, this park in Dorchester today. Mm -hmm. Refurbishing it, gave a short speech. As I said, he's been all over the place putting in work uh, with the MBPA this summer as well as – um, you know, in New York, on ABC News, talking about the Juice Foundation, the clothing line he's using to fund some of his, uh, you know, social efforts here, education efforts. He's been pretty active in Boston from the time he's been here. And, you know, people are going to debate what this means for his future. I know he had a few vague comments in here that I don't think really have much sway in either direction. But one thing um, that's been talked about when it comes to his future is his desire to you know, be involved in stuff off the court, make an impact off the court. And he has been able to do that pretty effectively here, obviously through the local colleges and then just being in the community as a whole here. Um, and I think that, I think that's a good sign in the sense that like he has been able to find ways to build his business here and make an impact here. Now he's expressed frustration on that sense too. And I don't think we've kicked around those comments uh, he made to the, um, I think it was to the New York Times, those specifically, about how he's felt kind of blockage in the city, like a pushback against what he's doing or an inability to do it at the level he wants to. Um, and so those are some of the factors people talk about when it comes to his future here is his connection with the city, his ability to accomplish what he wants to accomplish off the court here and those type of things. I mean, being a black Bostonian, I deal with those the same things, you know, I deal with those same things, the pushback from trying to get things to happen in the community, trying to get signage on buildings that should be historical landmarks in my neighborhood through the gentrification. People walk past them every day and don't realize that these have a massive significance to the black and Latino population of the city or acknowledging the black and Latino population of the city. So I totally understand where James coming from now. I think that there are a lot of people that get up in arms and get kind of uh, uh, trepidatious when he says these things. He's not saying anything that isn't true to anybody who hasn't lived here their entire lives doesn't already know about and has experienced these same things. So for him to vocalize it isn't a knock. I've lived here my entire life. I fight every day to change these things. These are the same things that Bill Russell talked about. Same thing that anybody with any level of intelligence would discuss openly about what needs to change in the city. Because things don't change in the city until you say these things need to change in the city. Otherwise, the status quo continues status quoing. And that's not what we want. We want progress. We want actual forward progress. (laughs) And the way that happens is to fight for it to vocalize it, to make it known it needs to happen. And that's what Jalen's doing. And again, when it comes to the fans, anything they perceive as being negative, oh God, oh, does he want to stay? Does he want to stay? Do I want to stay? I've been here 48 years. I'm going to die here. You know? So, uh, of course he's going to talk about the issues that he faces. He wants to do more. He wants to do more. He wants to provide more for the community. I want to see him do it. I'd like to help him do it. If he stays here long enough, it's going to happen. You think that any anybody who had a foundation, whether we're talking about um, when Antoine Walker had a foundation, the Real Deal Foundation, whether we're talking about the things that um, uh, uh, Paul Pierce wanted to do, uh, Eric Williams, anything, they had to deal with the same type of situation, you know, about getting, you know, help and wanting more and to do this and have a bigger grant and all these other things and reach out like when I think about the things that he's been able to do, you know, already, it's amazing. And again, he's nowhere near what 30. Well, if you round up, yeah. Think about what this man will accomplish by the time he's 30 and up, 30, 30 and 32 in the city. And you know why it will happen? Because he he verbalized that he wanted to do more. I'd much rather have somebody talk about they want to do more and they were blocked from doing more as opposed to completely retracting retracting and being withdrawn and just waiting for their time to be up so they can bounce. This is a positive thing. So there you have it. Um, let's go to Grant because he did a couple interviews over the week here. J.J. Redick, I think Theo Pinson, who used to play for the main Celtics. I think he's in Dallas now. Uh, so 
he's been talking about his exit from Boston. He's talked quite a bit already. He got interviewed by the athletic. I ran into him in Vegas, wasn't able to get him bummer, but uh, he's, he's said a lot. And I think, you know, he said a lot throughout this year. I think he had a frustrating year and it ultimately made sense for both sides. Here's the globe reported that they separated grant want to play more Dallas gave him a fully guaranteed contract. The Celtics were looking to have incentives involved in it. And uh, you know, he, Talked a little bit about Joe Missoula, what went down last year, the spat with Jimmy Butler and all the rest here in these podcasts. But first, I want to tell people quickly about our sponsor. Great sponsor here for the network, FanDuel, fanduel fanduel.com slash Boston. You know the URL at this point. Go get $200 in bonus bets when you head over there. And that's still the offer. The MLB season's still rolling. They're an official partner of MLB and uh, as our official sports wagering partner here, you can bet on everything from baseball games each night, uh, futures, some of the uh, you know same game parlays are always great, and NBA futures available right now as well. Celtics right up there with the Nuggets as NBA favorites next year. Uh, so go get two hundred dollars in bonus bets, everything from money line over under, who's going to hit the first home run, and it's on an app that's safe, secure. Super easy to use, and when you win, you get paid instantly. No better place to bet MLB than FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash Boston and get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. Of course, uh, go to Gambling Helpline, MA.org, or 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support uh, if you sense you have an issue with gambling. 